Hello, welcome to the Rently training. Today we'll be going over how to set up your account on Rently. Um, so this will be your Rently portal where you can control all of your Rently lockboxes and properties and this will be your home hub of where you will be operating the Rently system. So getting started, first we'll go over how to use the physical lockboxes. So as you can see on the right hand side of the, your properties page will be your available lockboxes. And next to each box is going to be a set of buttons, unlock, unshackle, and clock sync. So we'll go over what each of those buttons mean. The unlock button will give you a code that allows you to open up the lockbox and get access to the key inside. So if you click it, it'll go ahead and give you a code that you would then type into the lockbox. So unlock codes will start with the enter button, followed by a sequence of numbers, and then concluded with another enter button. One thing to note, whenever you're entering buttons uh, onto the lockbox, you're going to want to make sure that the box lights up and beeps every time you press a button. Otherwise, it's not uh, recording what you're inputting. Um, so again, just be sure that the box is lighting up and beeping every time you do press a button. Next, we have the unshackle button. This will give you a code so that you can unhook the U-bolt on the top of the lockbox so that you can place it on and off properties. So when you click it, it will go ahead and give you a code that you would type into the lockbox to again unshackle it. The unshackle codes start with the function button, um, followed by another sequence of numbers, and then concluded with the enter button. Next we have the clock sync button. Um, this is going to be used if you ever are inputting codes into the lockbox and you know that you're inputting them correctly, um, but the error light is lighting up. So you just go ahead and click clock sync. It's going to give you a long sequence of buttons that you're going to then type into the lockbox. And then once you enter in these two different codes here, um, you would just go ahead and then test it with an unlock or unshackle code. Um, but once you enter in the clock sync, the box should start working for you again. Now you shouldn't have to use this button very frequently. Um, we do just give it to you as your first step in troubleshooting if that air light is ever uh, illuminating for you when you're entering in codes in properly. So the next thing we'll go over is how to add a property into Rently. Um, to do that, you'd go ahead and click this orange Add New Property button. It'll then take you to a page where you can enter in the property details. Now, if you're using one of our softwares that we pull from, you can go ahead and click this Pull From Website button. And what that will do is it will give you a list of your properties that you have in your property management software, uh, such as at Folio, Buildium, Propertyware, Free Rental Site. Um, we can pull from all of those uh, property management softwares and then preload your data for you so you're not having to re-enter that information. Now I'll show you how to enter in a property manually into the Rently system. So you would just go ahead and type in the address. The bedrooms and bathrooms are required fields as well as the rent price. And then additionally you can type in a description. You can select any amenities that you have on the property. And then in this box here, you'll be able to assign the device that you want to have at the property. So primary device number is going to be the serial number of the box that you wanted to assign. And now when you click the drop down, it'll give you a list of your available devices. Just select the one that you want to place at that property. For access instructions, this is going to be instructions that we send the renter, letting them know where they can locate the lockbox at the property. So most often it will just be on the front door, but if you have a front gate where you want to attach the lockbox to, or maybe the property has a security code, you can go ahead and enter that information in this section. You can go ahead and leave Smart Home Hub blank. This is for our sister company, Rently Keyless. They offer different smart home technologies, um, so for now you can skip that. Next is setting it up for self-showing. So if you have it set to auto showing, that means that the lockbox is at the property and it's ready for people to go ahead and self tour. The other option is pre-leasing, which allows us to market the property, um, but it's not quite ready for showings yet. So we'll place it on the market and then gather a waiting list of interested parties. And then once you do set the property back to auto showing, we'll go ahead and email everybody on the waiting list, letting them know that they can then go ahead and self tour the property. 
you can then go ahead and upload your photos. and then click Save. Now you can see the property has been added to your properties page on this list here. Next to the property is a new set of buttons and we'll go over what each of those buttons mean now. So the preview button will generate the listing on Rently.com so this is the page that we want your renters to uh, be directed to. So the way that we do that is through our syndication and marketing. So we'll go ahead and syndicate your properties to the major listing sites. And then from there, uh, our syndication is nice because we have an auto response feature attached to it that allows us to auto respond to your inquiries that come in from the listing sites so that you're not having to manually reach out to prospects and give them the information about how to self tour. We'll go ahead and do that for you. So once they get that auto response message letting them know that you use Rently and they can self tour, they'll go ahead and click a link in that email where we then redirect them to your page, uh, to your property on Rently. And from here they can go ahead and click the self tour now button and register on Rently with their ID, credit card, and a selfie that our security team checks to make sure that everything lines up and is um, attached to the person who is signing up for the account. One thing to note about the Rently syndication is that Rently does have to be your only source of syndication for that auto response feature to work. So when you're adding properties, if you have uh, property management software or maybe you list your properties on the MLS, you want to make sure that you turn off the marketing syndication. So um, either post to internet or the outside syndication if you can go ahead and turn that off and allow Rently to handle that then we'll be able to send that auto response message to your email inquiries. Now if you ever need to sit, share that registration page with your prospects you can go ahead and use this marketing link button and it will give you a link to your property on Rently. So you can even put this on your property description on your website or just share this with any of your prospects. And you can also share it um, through text. So if you have their phone number, you can go ahead and take down their cell phone number and we'll text them the link to your property on Rently where they can go ahead and register. Another option is to send codes directly to prospects. So this actually bypasses our Rently registration and security process and allows you to send a code directly to the prospect. So if you click that button, the new visitor direct code, it will take you to a page where you then take down their contact information. So their name, when they want to go out and tour the property, and then their phone number. And then for this option, we do have the ability to take down their credit card information on the next page, um, but it's not required. So it is up to your discretion whether you want to take down their credit card information or not, but we do give it to you as an option for a little bit more added security for the direct code option. So again, just to be clear, the marketing and text link will take renters to the Rently registration page where they're required to register with their personal information. The new visitor direct code bypasses the Rently registration and security process and does not take down any personal information from the prospect. The next option we have here is the activity log. And this is going to be where you can see all of the activity for your property. So you'll get to see how many showings, calls, emails you're getting, as well as where your leads are coming from. And then once you start getting inquiries and showings, um, the prospect's contact information will show up in this section, as well as any vendor access. Um, and additionally, um, any feedback that renters leave uh, about the property will also be found in this section here. So it's a nice snapshot of all the activity that's happening for your specific property. And then if you ever need to share this information with anybody who doesn't have access to the Rently portal, you can do so using this report URL button. What that will do is generate a live link to your property's activity log and that you can go ahead and share with other people, perhaps if you do owner reports 
or just need to share this with anybody outside of Rently. Finally, once you get your property leased out, you can go ahead and click the Move to Archive button. And what that does is it will uh, turn off the marketing for the property, it will unassign the lockbox, and it will also move the property out of this view here and into the Archive Properties tab. So if you ever need to put the property back on market, we save the property details for you, and you can easily move it back over to your active properties. The next use case for the Rently system is for your vendors or your trusted parties. So these are people that you do not need to take down their credit card information um, or have a photo of their ID. You trust them, you can go ahead and add them as a vendor. So for this, you just take down their name. And then if you are setting up a MLS agent that you want to go ahead and be able to view your property, you would just click the Realtor button. And what that does is it will have the rent the vendor record the reason for their um, access to the lockbox when they call our vendor line. Um, and then just click the Never Expire pin, and this will allow them to use the same pin um, for all future visits. So this is the pin number here, this phone verification code. Um, but essentially the way the vendor line works is that when vendors go out to the property, they will dial this 888 number here, which is our vendor phone line. Uh, on their first call, if you cl click the never expire pin, they'll be prompted to enter in this phone verification code. Um, from then on, we'll go ahead and remember their phone number. Um, but again, on the first call, they're prompted to enter the phone verification code just so we can make sure that they're the ones you've granted access to your properties. Um, once they do that, they're prompted to enter in the serial number of the lockbox that's at the property. And then from there, we'll go ahead and give them the access code, um, which again lasts for one hour. If you need to share these instructions with your vendors, um, such as uh, pasting these inside the vendor, um, the MLS showing instructions, um, you would just copy and paste this for them. Uh, additionally, if you needed to email or text it to your vendors, um, we have the ability for you to do so using these two buttons here. And then on your vendors list, you can see all of your vendors and also determine what kind of access they have. So if you want them to just be able to access the key or also to be a, to unshackle the lockbox, lock you can do this here in this section as well. And then if you ever needed to see those vendor instructions again, just go ahead and click the name and it'll give you those instructions as well as the access log so every time a vendor has called from this company has called the vendor phone line you'll see that recorded uh, on on their name as well next we'll go into the account section this is going to be where all of your company settings are so you can see here just scroll down to edit account settings and then in this section you can upload a company logo change your company name if you need to the main contact email is the email address where, where we will send your monthly invoice receipt. And then you also have the ability to determine what kind of email notifications you would like to receive. Vendors is going to be when a vendor calls the vendor phone line and checks in at one of your properties. Leads is going to be when someone inquires on one of the listing sites. Viewings is when someone actually goes out and self-tours one of your properties. And then feedback is when someone submits the post showing follow-up feedback that we send renters once they view your properties. You can also add additional email addresses to receive these notifications as well in these CC email fields. Moving down here, you can go ahead and set up your showing schedule. So your showing schedule and your time zone are going to be where the time zone where your lockboxes are located and then your showing schedule is when you want people to be able to self tour so if people show up outside of these hours here they will not be able to generate a code to access the lockbox and you can edit these times down to the half hour of whenever you're comfortable with people self touring your properties go ahead and click save when you're done editing your settings and in this section is also where you can go ahead and update the credit card that we have on file for your account and then over in the agent section is where you can add additional 
agents in your office to be able to have login info to the rent lease system. So to do so, you would just hit add leasing agent and then take down their contact information and then assign them a role. The two main roles that most of our clients use are going to be leasing and leads and admin. So admin will have full access to the account um, and be able to edit company settings and all of that information. Uh, leasing and leads will not have access to this account tab, so they won't be able to edit any company settings or anything like that. So those are going to be the two differences there uh, regarding the different access to the Rently system. Again, you can edit their access in this agent section. Next, we'll go over to the customization tab. This is where you can register your Rently custom phone line. So when you sign up for Rently, we give you a custom phone line that will be the phone number that we post on your listings. And when renters call that phone number, they're given three different options. Option number one is to receive more information about a specific property of yours. Option number two is to receive a full list of all of your available properties. And then option three is to get forwarded to a live representative in your office. So when renters select the option three from the Rently Custom phone line, they are redirected to this main phone number that we have in your company settings. So just make sure that this main phone number is a phone number that you're comfortable with renters um, getting access to uh, if they do have questions regarding one of your properties. But going back to the customization section, to register your custom phone line, just click the button, uh, enter in a good local area code that you want to use, and then select one of the numbers from the list. And again, this will be the number that is shown on your Rently advertisements. Next, we'll go over to the rental criteria. So this is where you can set up some pre-screening requirements for your properties. So you can go ahead and set the criteria that you want to have for your properties. This is going to be on a portfolio-wide basis, um, so it will be blanket for all of your properties in your portfolio. Um, and then when renters go ahead and register for a showing, they're asked to answer these questions here. And you can see if they meet your pre-screening requirements. In addition, with this iQual Plus, you can go ahead and set up your credit requirements for your properties. So you can split up your properties by property classes based on the rent price, um, which allows you to set up different credit requirements for different property classes. One thing I did want to mention for the pet policy here, this is going to be, again, on a portfolio-wide basis, um, but I'm sure some of your properties might have different um, pet policies. When you're actually adding your properties into Rently, you can go ahead and set up your pet policy on a per-property basis. So here, when you're on the Edit Property screen, it gives you the option to determine your pet policy. You just go ahead and set that up here, and then whatever you put in the property level will go ahead and override what you have on the company-wide setting. And then finally, we'll go over into the lead section. This will be where you can see all of the leads that have registered or self-toured on Rently.com. And basically, it gives you their contact information, the property that they were interested in, uh, whether they saw it, inquired, or just registered to view it. You can then go ahead and click on their name and add notes, assign a leasing agent, send them an invite to view the property, and so, so forth. So basically, a lead management system that allows you to keep track of your leads and help determine your follow-up strategy. So that's the basic overview of the Rently system. Thank you for your time and we look forward to working with you.